few seconds. Good morning, kids. And here we continue the topic soil profile. That is the second heading of the chapter. The second heading of the chapter. And what exactly is this soil profile? If we have had a look at any construction site or if we are passing on from here and we are going towards our native place and uh, there is this long cut made on the side of a hill. Wherever means there is this digging under the soil. In colony itself you can see in some of the places where they do uh, construction of buildings. Before that they go for grasping. That means they are going to create the big hole in the soil. And if you happen to pass nearby during any construction site, you will be able to see the different layers, different colors in the soil very clearly. If you have not observed till now, try to observe things around you. Soil profile basically means that there are four horizons. We have divided the soil mixture into four different parts. Starting from top, going towards bottom. This is how it works. If we have taken some part of the soil and we have kept it in glass, still we can have the concept of A horizon below that is B horizon moving further is C horizon and there is this bedrock. Usually here on the top of this A horizon, we have soil. Basically, the soil which inhabits most of the plants and animals in it. And of course, in A horizon, here we have what we call it as the topsoil. And on the surface of the topsoil, we have a thin layer of Humus. Now what is this humus? Humus is a layer which is black in color. It contains the dead and decaying plants and animals in it. And what for is it essential? It is required for the proper growth of the plants. And how is it being made? It has made from the decomposition. See the parts of the plant, the leaf or the twigs, they keep falling down on the surface of the soil. And they keep on decaying there itself on the surface of the soil. So part of these and of course the animal waste all together, decaying for days together. That forms this black layer on the surface of the topsoil and that we call it as the humus. This humus is very much essential for the proper growth of the plants. It has all the nutrients in it, maximally needed nitrogen. It is very rich in nitrogen. Usually the plants will start growing from A horizon and it penetrates down to B horizon maximum, the bigger trees, their roots, they penetrate down up to B horizon. Rarely in some of the very, very large trees, they can go or reach up to C, but maximally we can say that the live forms, they exist in horizon A. And of course the roots of, the deeper roots of the bigger trees, they may be there in horizon B. What exactly lies below horizon C? 
total dead that is what we call as bed rock big huge rocks are there and how can i do this activity at home just like this class like in this beaker i have kept let's have a closer look at this one can you see the layers here i have actually put some soil in this from the garden itself so the color of the soil you can say it's like totally almost near to black fertile soil it is on the surface of the water on the surface of the water if you see there are some parts of the plant grass mainly right and the base part of it the base part of it actually the bottom part of it has bigger particles stone grit this is how the soil profile will appear to you if you are going to take some sample of soil in glass kaanch ka glass glass made up of glass and there this you can do at home also you can take up the soil from your neighborhood maybe near once you are going to any of the garden small lump of it or maybe your kitchen garden itself put it in the glass and then add some water try to stir it little bit with spoon itself you can do that allow it to stand for some time and you will see that the parts of the plant twig or small things they will float on the surface of water and the actual soil profile will be where the soil begins the top layer will contain the smallest particles and the base part of it contains the largest particles soil profile in some of the pictures you try to observe and that is going to make your fundamental concept of soil even more clearer let's have a look at some of the pictures and here i would like to show you first of all in and around you can we see this picture this is not a diagram this is a picture wherein they have dug a part near to a crop land or a grassland area everybody can see this yes or no no ma'am can you see this image no ma'am no. no ma'am no. no okay let me see and let me click on this once again Yes, yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Okay. Okay. So here, here we see this image where we have this grassland, the grassland, and near the grassland here is trees. Yes, ma'am. So here is that image we were viewing, and in that image, my request to everybody, please. do not please do not disturb the class unless you are asked for keep your mic at mute once again this image the image has this grass 
and on the lower side of the grass we can see the layer of humus and of course the lower parts also the different horizons and now let's see one more let's have a look at one more image and let me show you this one can we see this image the picture yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah. yeah here it is yes, near to a construction site the grass or the plants are very small in size and below that you can see this black layer this is basically the humus we know this this black layer going up to here you can see that there are the roots coming up to here so this is actually the air horizon and from this portion lower side begins the bean horizon up to here and here you can see that there are stones stones are very clear and there are no roots of the plants here reason is that on the surface of the soil you can see there is only grass if there are bigger trees then those trees will penetrate their roots up to this bean horizon and it may come down a few of them up to the sea also but if the trees are big enough then only it is going to happen clear it is soil profile the layers of the soil horizon a b c and d and now let's have a look at another picture and this image is going to give us a clear cut picture of how the trees can grow this they have labeled as o a e this up to here this e is actually this horizon a and you can see that basically the grasses can grow on the surface they may penetrate a little bit in horizon a only their roots cannot go down to the b horizon see this is b they have labeled the yellow part of it then the c horizon and then of course the rocks this particular we can say is actually the inhabitant area of all living beings horizon a the top horizon is actually the life horizon where the life exists b horizon those which are very very tall trees they can only send their tap roots up to this level of b and you can see very clearly by the end of this b the roots are not going further that means the trees should be tall tall very tall enough to penetrate down b and of course a little part of the c also usually all the plants the trees the life forms they live in horizon a and maximally they can reach up to horizon b so this soil profile is clear to all of us soil profile the structure of the soil profile and the activity that we can do is very simple let's try to do that and of course few of the images i have shown you there are some videos also available on the net that also we can try to go through and here let's come back and understand and write about soil and the soil profile once again before we start writing soil profile basically would be 
Like we write for ourselves profile, job profile. Same way, we can say the soil profile would be that it has what exactly lies in the soil that we are trying to study. Topmost region, and that topmost, of course, is horizon A. What exactly there with horizon A? The topsoil, and on the top of the topsoil also the humus layer. So there exactly up to here, maximally the life form will be there, including earthworm, including smaller insects. They will be living here only bacteria. And this horizon B, those trees which are big enough, their roots can penetrate down up to that. Let's start writing based on this soil profile. We have written up to two extra questions and under the heading soil profile, the first question we are going to write down is the definition. The definition of The definition of humus and weathering. What is this weathering? Weathering is basically breaking down of larger, bigger rock into the smaller particles. The bigger rocks will get broken down to the smaller ones. The smaller ones will still get broken down to their smaller ones. And finally, the fine particles will make the layer of the soil. And they say to make one centimeter, one centimeter thickness of soil, it takes around 50 years. And we humans are removing the covering, the green covering present on the surface of the soil, that means deforestation and due to that deforestation what is happening is that the top soil is exposed to rain heavy rains of course drought everything and that exposure basically removes the top soil and the soil finally turns barren that means nothing can grow there Let's write about this extra question 3. Define humus and weathering. There is one term we have covered in a previous chapter, weather and climate. That weather and this weather is different, remember that. This is breaking down of the bigger particles, right? Now let's write the definition for humus. This can be asked for one mark. The rotting dead matter in the soil. The rotting Dead matter, dead matter in the soil is called humus. In the soil, is called humus. Even if in your exam you write down that humus is basically made up of the dead and decaying parts of plant and animal waste. There also your answer is right. That only is humus. We are using this term rotting dead matter. Rotting means decaying. The black mass decaying. Okay. So here for weathering now.
the soil is formed by the soil is formed by the breaking down of rocks the breaking down of rocks and now who exactly breaks it there are some forces like wind water and climate wind water and climate this process is called weathering this process is called by the time we are writing this let's keep understanding during summer what happens is that the sun heats these rocks and at that time rain falls and when the rain falls on a hard surface it develops cracks in it and those cracks contain water which becomes ice you can say or which freezes down when the temperature lowers during winters this keeps on happening year after year the cracks become deeper and deeper because you know very well that the same amount of water once it start converting to ice it occupies more space so the water in the crevices the bigger rocks they start developing the cracks or the crevices and these cracks contain water this water converts to ice in winter season occupy the most space therefore what happens that every season the same treatment heat and cold treatment keeps on increasing the cracks or the crevices on the surface of the rocks and due to that what happens due to that finally the bigger rocks get broken down to the smaller ones and the process continues till it converts to soil i hope you must have noted down the two definitions we can move ahead writing about soil profile soil profile and the next question is of course that only we are going to write down about soil profile and all its horizon we can always take a screenshot please whenever something is written on the board you can take a screenshot let's continue writing for next extra question that is extra question number 4 extra question four and that is explain the structure of soil profile explain the structure of soil profile a vertical section through different layers vertical is standing okay and horizontal is exactly parallel to the surface of the earth like 
right now we are standing, so we are in vertical position. And when we lie down on the bed to sleep, that is horizontal position. Okay. So vertical. A vertical section through different. A vertical section. different layers of the soil different layers of the soil of the soil is called the soil profile That's the definition of soil profile, remember. Each layer differs in each layer differs in texture. Texture, its structure you can say and the way you feel it. Is it smooth or yours? Texture, color, depth, color, depth, how deep it is, and chemical composition, and chemical composition. These layers are referred to as horizons. These layers are these layers are Beyond this, we don't have much concern of the 
to the layers, right? So this layer is soft, porous, soft, porous, and can retain more water. Can retain more water. It can hold more water. It is called the topsoil. It is called the topsoil. It provides shelter for it provides, you can say it is a home for many insects and animals. It provides shelter for living organisms. Living organisms such as beetles, rodents, moles, worms, beetles, rodents. And more. Now, what are these rodents like rats and rabbits? Okay, those digging, burrowing animals which live under the soil. The roots of small plants. The roots of Small plants like those of grass are embedded entirely in the topsoil. Embedded, they are present. They cannot go beyond topsoil, the roots are fibrous, very delicate. And these roots will be present only in the topsoil. We will continue writing the later part of the chapter this particular answer that is about horizon B, C and bedrock. This answer is not complete but here we come to the end of today's class. We will continue this in my next lecture that is tomorrow and we will wind up this along with this we are going to deal with the next heading different types of soils. So let's read and come prepared. Happy learning kids.